Hello, my name is Richard Duncan. I'm an orthopedic spinal surgeon uh, in Johnson City, Tennessee, and I've been in practice here since uh, 1994 at Watauga Orthopedics. I practice primarily uh, spinal surgery in the cervical and lumbar spine. I've created these videos in an attempt to uh, give you an overview and an idea of what a typical procedure involves. Each procedure is different, each patient is different, each pathology is different, and it's important to understand that, again, this is a typical uh, experience and uh, there's specific risk and benefits that go along with each procedure, and you and I will carefully go over that in the office and discuss each uh, procedure uh, and the risk associated with that. This is a model of the uh, spine demonstrating the area of uh, bone that we will take away uh, when performing a microdiscectomy. Most of this area is actually a soft tissue called the ligamentum flavum, so we really don't have to take away but a very, very small amount of bone. Uh, you can see here between the fourth and fifth vertebra on the left side, we would take away a small area of bone that's shaded in purple there. Uh, it ends up being about uh, the size of a dime, and that's called the laminotomy site. Uh, in no way typically does this um, area of bone removal affect the stability of the spine. It's a very, very small area. We leave this joint intact here called the facet joint. But by making this small opening, bringing the microscope in, we're able to visualize the nerve root there and take out the piece of disc that's pressing on the nerve. This is the uh, MRI scan of a patient with a L4-5 herniated disc. This is the view from the side. Uh, several things we're looking at. Uh, bone, disc, bone, disc. This is the front of the patient. This is the back of the patient. This is the spinal uh, nerve roots and the spinal fluid. You can see here clearly that there's a disc herniation coming out here between the fourth and fifth vertebra pressing on the nerve roots there. This is the same patient. This is what's called the axial view. Uh, we're making a cross section of the patient. The patient's laying on uh, their back. This would be the back. This would be the front. This would be the left side. This would be the right side. This is the spinal canal. Typically this would be wide open where the nerves go through. But you can see here a very large disc herniation centrally and over on the left side compressing the left L5 nerve root. At the time of the microdiscectomy surgery, we'll be making a small incision and going down and moving the muscle out of the way. We'll be making a small opening here to take the pressure off the nerve. This is a typical incision at the time of surgery. It's about two centimeters long. After we uh, finish, we close this up uh, with some band-aids or steri strips and we place a small band-aid uh, over this area. This band-aid you should leave on uh, for about two days until after the surgery, then you can take it off and shower and just leave the steri strips in place. We put some local anesthetic in the skin, so there should not be a lot of discomfort uh, when you first wake up from surgery with this incision. Here we are in surgery. Uh, I want to show you some instruments that we use. We're about 35 minutes in. This is a, a small micro pituitary that we use to grab tissue uh, underneath a microscope. This is a, a micro nerve hook that we use to move things around carefully. And this is a small ball hook that's similar to that for moving tissue. This instrument is called a kerosene and uh, this also grabs and moves uh, bone. We've got the uh, retractor in place and we've got a micro nerve root retractor there. We're holding that. Uh, we've got some disc there that we see uh, through the microscope. We've already made our laminotomy, the opening that I showed you earlier. Now we're going to reach in with the micro grabber and uh, pull out this small piece of disc to see if we can take away the leg pain. Here's the piece of disc coming out here. It's a moderate sized disc herniation. This has the consistency of crab meat. 
it was pressing on the nerve. We've removed that now so that hopefully this will improve the patient's leg pain. We're going to go ahead and uh, close things up now and um, hopefully the patient will be able to go home in a couple of hours. I hope uh, this video has helped you understand what's involved with a lumbar microdiscectomy. Typically uh, after surgery uh, patients are mobilized uh, in the recovery room uh, within an hour and usually go home in two to three hours. Many people have no buttock and leg pain when they wake up, but some people still have some buttock and leg pain, especially if the nerve is inflamed. Even though you take the pressure off the nerve, there still may be some inflammation in the nerve that's going to have to calm down. This can occur uh, over a period of weeks typically. Overall, we have about an 85 to 90% success rate in getting rid of buttock and leg pain with this surgery, but again, back pain would not be improved. After surgery, uh, I would leave the dressing on uh, until two days uh, after surgery, then you can take it off and shower. There'll be uh, some band-aids there that uh, across the incision, just leave those there till you come back to your first post-operative visit, which will be about a week. It's fine to be up and walking. You can sit how you want to and lie how you want to. You can walk up and down steps. I'd rather you avoid bending, twisting, or any heavy lifting more than about 15 pounds. It's fine to ride in a car, but I would avoid driving a car for the first week. Uh, as far as returning to work, you can return to office type work uh, within about a week, but if your job requires a lot of bending, twisting, and lifting, it'll typically be about six weeks. At the end of six weeks after surgery, I don't place restrictions on patients as far as work or return to sports. Uh, and my hope is that you could return to full uh, active lifestyle without any buttock and leg pain. It is important to note right after surgery that many patients find that the back soreness is worse uh, the second and third night than it is the first night, and then it tends to improve from there. I hope this answers your questions. Again, um, we will go over the specifics of the risk and benefit and answer any specific questions you have in the office uh, prior to considering surgery, and I wish you a full and speedy recovery. Thank you.